Okay. Uh, your final exam uh, is really going to be based off of this content. Uh, you're going to have to find derivatives and limits. Okay. And today, uh, today might be conceptually maybe the the harder of the limits or harder of the lessons coming up i'm not sure but uh, it has to do with derivatives of inverse functions okay and so we're going to review a little bit what we covered in college algebra we're going to take about uh you know eight minutes and review that college algebra piece if i have f of x is equal to 3x minus 2 uh, and i want to find f inverse of x do you remember what i do with the x and y values I switch them. X becomes Y and Y becomes X. Yep. So it turns out that this inverse function is X equals 3Y minus 2. And now I'm going to solve for Y. So I have X plus 2 is equal to 3Y. Divide both sides by 3. And Y is equal to 1 third X plus 2 thirds. Everybody okay with that? Because we switch x and y, the domain of f becomes the range of f inverse. And the range of f becomes the domain of f inverse. So those flip as well. One of my favorite qualities about uh, these inverse graphs or inverse functions is <clears throat> what their graphs look like. So I'm going to draw a 6 by 6. By the way, this morning was the first time I've taught this lesson. I think it went pretty well, so um, hopefully we've got no any kinks or mistakes that could exist. I've always just covered it right before the AP exam, and I haven't done it in this format. I've just kind of shown some problems. So this is just review. We've done this before, but this the rest is laid out. Uh, it's been a while. Okay, so 3x minus 2. Um, shift it down 2, and then uh, use my slope. And I've got a nice uh, equation for a line here then. Nice graph. So that's my original function, f. Now I'll graph f inverse in red. What's the y-intercept for the inverse function? Two-thirds, and then I'm going to go over three and up one. Which is kind of awkward to do uh, with our fraction, but... We have the star quality of toughness, so. Does anybody remember how I know graphically that those are inverses? They're not perpendicular. If you remember from last year, which I know it's difficult, they are reflected over the line y equals x. So f inverse of x is f of x reflected over the line y equals x. So that's why one way we can tell graphically that functions are inverses of each other, which is pretty cool. We also have this piece called the horizontal line test. If f has an inverse... then f is 1 to 1 and passes the horizontal line test. Now, maybe you don't remember what 1 to 1 is. But 
remember the definition of a function is for every input there's exactly one output. One to one means that for every input there's exactly one output and for every output there's exactly one input. So these lines are one to one. Every input is one output, every one out out every output is one input. I'll give you an example of something that is not one to one. That's not one to one. If I plug in one, I just get one output. But there are two different things that give me an output of three, aren't there? So it's not one to one. The problem is if you take something that's not one to one and you find the inverse of it, is the inverse a function? No. And we, we you know, we encounter problems when we don't have functions. So that's why we want it to be one to one. And the last thing is a composition test. So if we want to show that two things are uh, actually inverses, uh, f and g are inverses if f of g of x is equal to x and g of f of x is equal to x. And it was first semester last year that you were doing that type of stuff on your tests and your study guides. And you, you're not going to have to do any of this on the test. I'm just trying to refresh your brain. Just bring back a little bit of what we did last year. A little bit. Okay. So, uh, we're not going to do all the parts of the directions. Again, I, I just wrote this yesterday for the first time, and uh, but we, we are going to do a little bit. It says, using the function above, determine f inverse prime of 4. So, let's try to figure a few things out. First of all, we have f of x is equal to 3x minus 2, and I have f inverse of x was equal to one third x plus two thirds right all right if we were wondering the derivative of f we would do f prime of x is equal to what three does it matter that we're taking the derivative at four the fact is it always has a derivative of 3, right? Now, let's think about this. We have the f inverse. If you do, and I'm just doing this so you can understand the notation, f inverse prime of x, that's equal to what? 1 third. Does it matter that you're trying to find it at 4? Check the graph. By looking at the graph, does it look like the red line has a slope of one third? Yeah, it seems reasonable. Okay, so you can see that uh, our goal today is to identify not the derivative of the original function, but the derivative of the inverse. We're going to do it two ways. We're going to actually find the inverse. That's one way. And then we have a special formula we could teach you that makes it a little bit easier. Go get some brain food. Come on back with a smile. All right, let's check the next side. Can you what? Uh, no, sorry. They can actually tell if people are doing that back at the power station. All right. Uh, if you like to wear my jacket, you can. Uh, given f of x is 1 over x uh, plus 2, determine f inverse of 3 algebraically and using your calculator. Uh, check the graph to assess the reasonableness of your answer. We're not going to actually uh, use our calculator here, but I'm going to quick sketch a graph. This is a vertical asymptote at what? Good job. The horizontal asymptote would be as we let x go to infinity. As x goes to infinity, what happens to the output? It gets extremely small, so 0. So this is the graph of f of x.
what we want to do is we want to find f inverse prime of 3. Well, let's first find the inverse. I have y is equal to 1 over x plus 2. I'm going to switch that to x over 1 is equal to 1 over y plus 2. Cross multiply xy plus 2x is equal to 1. Or xy is equal to 1 minus 2x. And I'm going to divide the x through. Okay? Well, let, let's just look at it right now like it is. What would the vertical asymptote be there? Zero. Think about it. You have a horizontal asymptote of zero here. So for the inverse, you're going to have a vertical asymptote of zero. If we let this limit go to infinity, you have a negative 2x on top. You have an x on the bottom. That would give you negative 2. If you let this limit go to infinity, you're going to get negative 2. Do you see that? So I have a horizontal asymptote of negative 2. Here's graphically what the question is asking. So watch as I do this. This is kind of confusing. It says asking f prime inverse of 3, or f inverse prime of 3. What that means is f inverse of 3, so where does it have a height of 3? I don't know, maybe like right there. That's where the function has a height of 3. What's the x value? I don't know, maybe like negative 1 and a half. So then if I take that negative 1 and a half value, I'm going to look at the slope of the inverse at that spot. You can see that that's, that's kind of the slope. All right? So that's what we're trying to figure out. So let's, uh, let's rewrite this. We're going to divide each one by x. I've got 1 over x minus 2. Let's find the derivative. What's the derivative of 1 over x? Negative 1 over x squared. And the derivative of negative 2? 0. So what I want to do is I want to plug in 3, and I get y prime is equal to negative 1 over 9. Uh, <clears throat> negative 1 over 9 represents the slope of the inverse function at 3. So if you look at 3 over, say, 1, 2, 3, the inverse function we drew, drew in red, does it seem reasonable that that slope is about 1 ninth, negative 1 ninth? Yeah. Wouldn't it be great if we didn't have to take the inverse every time? Like, that, that takes a while, doesn't it? So... Let's find a formula that makes it so we don't have to take the inverse every time. Derivative of an inverse function. This is what you need to memorize for the test. You don't need to memorize the words, just the formula. If f is 1 to 1 and differentiable with inverse function, g is equal to f inverse, and f inverse of g of a does not equal 0, this means we won't be dividing by 0, then the inverse function is differentiable at a, and we know that f inverse prime, so the derivative of the inverse at a specific point ends up being 1 divided by f prime of f inverse of a. I know. Okay? So, let me explain what that means by trying an example here. We're going to organize this work so it will be very 
easy for you to follow. But the question says, given the following functions, find the derivative of the inverse at that point. Well, think about it, folks. If I have f of 6, I get, what, 3 over 5? What that means is, if I plug in 6, I get 3 fifths. Or f inverse of 3 fifths is equal to 6. Well, I need f inverse of 6. How would I figure out f inverse of 6? Is 6 the x value or the y value? Right now, when I plugged in 6, I got 3 fifths. So this was the x value and this was the y value. But if I'm wondering f inverse of 6, then 6 becomes the y value. So what I'm wondering is what x value gives me an output of 6. So I take the function, instead of plugging in 6, I set it equal to 6. How do I solve that? Cross multiply, so 6x minus 6 is equal to 3, or 6x is equal to 9, so x is 3 halves. You got that? This formula really has three parts to it. So here's how I chose to organize my work the previous hour. I said we're going to look for f inverse of a, and then we're going to do f prime, and then we're going to do 1 divided by. Those are the three operations that we're doing. And as long as you can remember that layout, you can do the problem. So we started by finding f inverse. f inverse gave us 3 halves. Now what I have to do is I have to take the derivative. How do I take the derivative of 3 over x minus 1? Chain rule. 3 times x minus 1 to the negative 1. 3u to the negative 1. I get negative 3 over x minus 1 quantity squared, right? So I figured out f inverse. Now I do f prime of whatever that gave me. So I do f prime of that 3 halves. So I plug the 3 halves in for x. I get negative 3 divided by parentheses. x minus 1. Whoop, not x minus 1, but or 1.5 minus 1 squared. And I get negative 12. So negative 12 goes there. So my answer is negative 1 12. If you're feeling a little bit confused, don't worry. We're going to do another example together, and then you're going to do one on your own. When you do the next one on your own, you're going to feel like you got it because you're smarter in second hour, right? Okay. Happy birthday, Kelsey. So what I want to do here is I want to do 1 over f prime of f inverse. Yep, we're going to get to be in a second here. Of negative 1. That's our, that's our rule. I divide it up into three kind of categories, and I start by doing f inverse of negative 1. So does that mean that I plug negative 1 in here, or I set it equal to negative 1? I set it equal to negative 1. So now i got to solve for x. I'm going to add the 1 over x squared plus x minus 2 is equal to 0. Well, does that, that doesn't factor, does it? So we'll use a rational roots theorem. What's a good guess? 1. Let's guess 1. 1 plus 1 is minus 2 is 0. So 1 works. So it looks like 1 is the x value that gives me an output of negative 1. 
So my next box, I do F prime of 1. I guessed. It doesn't factor, so you got to use the rational roots theorem. My choices are plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. Okay, so F prime of 1, what's the derivative? Plug in 1 to the derivative, what do you get? What would you like to guess? Pi? Square root of 19? No, I'm just I'm just saying I'm just going off of what you asked. You you could guess twelve. The rational roots theorem says that twelve is not an option. If you remember the rational roots theorem says if you look at your P's and your Q's, factors of two are one and two. Factors of one are one. You divide them, you get plus or minus one and plus or minus two. So those are our choices. Okay. All right. Jackrabbit. He's wearing a jackrabbit shirt. All right. How about this? Why don't you try this one right here, letter B? Well, I just, you know, when I... I knew I knew you guys wouldn't get C. I knew you wouldn't come up with the guess, or not all of you. Whereas just about all of you will be able to get B. So I wanted you to experience success. I care about you. Check the board when you're done, see if you got the answer. I didn't do the proof for why the formula works. If you want to see the proof, I could show you sometime. Okay. We all okay with that? Not too bad, is it? So it looks bad, but you got to remember the formula. And it's easy to remember the formula if you kind of just remember the chart. So now, instead of being given um, an equation, we're given a table. Six. What? You can do whatever you want. I, no, I just, I, I make this because I think it's, I just think it's a helpful way for you guys to organize. Yeah, I, I, I still think it's a helpful way to, to organize it. So, but that said, you'd be less likely to have to uh, make that little chart being you're given this table here. So I start with F inverse of six. So what mistake might people make for F inverse of 6? What, what might they say is F inverse of 6? Say they could say negative 2. Uh, 3 is not a mistake. That's the correct answer. Um, I think that when people see you know, like F inverse of 6, I think they might try plugging 6 in and getting 0. But 6 is the output, right? So this is asking for what input gives us an output of 6. 3. So this is 3, so I want to know f prime of 3. So this is my x value, this is my y value. So it's saying if you have a y value of 6, what is the corresponding x value? So what's f prime of 3? Negative 2.
Now you can see on the AP exam, why would you ever choose negative one half? It's not even a number up here. Get my point? What was that difficult? Ignore the thing in the corner. Okay, go ahead, you guys. Uh, try this one on your own. So, again, just the little chart helps you organize your work and gives you a better chance of remembering it. Because when I met, uh, I'll be honest with you guys, when I met and talked about AP Calc material with, with people, I didn't know the formula. I, I never learned this ever in my life, okay? Uh, F prime of F inverse of A. I, I, I didn't know that. It's not that important. You're never going to use it again. The only time you're using it on an AP exam. That's the only time. Trust me. And so I just want to help you come up with a helpful way to remember it. So, all right, you got a short worksheet.